even the guys with a tracksuit on zipped up to their chin I would know who's in shape how by the face because the face will be super drawn you'll see the muscles in the side of the jaw the face will be sunken in that guy's you can see he's in shape but mm -hmm. now the guy's round and happy and you know. <laughs> <laughs> round and happy yeah yeah, yeah they're even, smiling we well smiling. the bellies are round as well because they've got those sort of distended uh, yeah this is from uh nobody really knows exactly what that is but i started using insulin as an anabolic 96 97 the last two years i was competing um and my stomach just started to get a little bit distended so mm. i think this is this is the cause is that, is that called bubble gut yeah in, insulin's a strange one uh, from what i from what i understand about it, because obviously it's a diabetic a drug that and um, I'm, I'm guessing what uh, you guys were doing was trying to get your body to absorb more nutrients and more the uh, insulin in a way is an anabolic hormone so if okay. you mix it with growth hormone and steroids theoretically it, it you know it works in an anabolic uh -huh. way but uh, I tell people that I coach and I help now and advise I say look I'm always honest I tell you the truth yes I used insulin was it a positive in my mind no it wasn't because you'd start to lose a little bit of the quality uh -huh. and uh, not to mention the negative health effects you know diabetics that use insulin I think they have like 10 years less life expectancy wow so if you're using insulin and steroids and other things to all together this is yeah. becoming a ticking time bomb over yeah there's a lot you know, of the older you get the it. older you get the more the less that you know let's say when I was 20 years old yeah I could go out and get totally hammered pissed drink a bottle of vodka and the next day I'll probably be all right or the day after that I'll be fine if I did it now I'd be destroyed I wouldn't yeah. I'd be a week yeah so your body can't tolerate this kind of stress as you get older yeah um so we're seeing a lot of heart attacks and, and stuff with bodybuilders now in the 40s and 50s I mean it's it's happened always since the 90s there's been a few guys Mike Maserato that competed against me had a triple bypass at 38 and died at 48 so it you know it's there but it's getting more and more frequent now I think yeah I wrote down a few names that I, I wanted to bring up because it it feels like oh, especially I got a list of 50 when I, I did a podcast last week with wow. this medical expert and there's 50 pros that I know about that's just pros that have died what about amateurs what about wow. guys that never compete well yeah like um I don't know if you know this guy but um back in the 90s there was a guy called Andy Hornby yeah, British guy. Competed against him in the British Championship 1998. He was uh, light heavyweight, I think. Yeah, my champion. dad. Well, he was my dad's best friend, actually. But my dad always said, like, this a young guy, guy wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. he was 20, early 20s. He died backstage or something, I think, uh, because of the dehydration. Yeah. That's, the, that's diuretic use. Yeah. Uh, some guys and girls use diuretics to lose body water. Mm. Uh, and you lose a lot of electrolytes electrolytes regulate your heartbeat so mm -hmm. if they get really out of whack uh, Mohammed Ben Aziza that beat me in my first pro show he died on a European tour um, from basically his whole body started cramping up including his heart and he had a heart attack in the very early 30s I think so this, this process that you guys go through I don't think people understand who see it on stage they just think you know you inject steroids you get on stage but like there's the obviously there's the bulking and you change drugs you take you take cutting drugs i guess that are different and then um then if you're in using i don't know if insulin is a part of that but the fact that you then have to take all of the water out of your body and uh i went to a bodybuilding contest once and i seen this kid like he, he was like lying there before getting on stage just drained no energy, and, it, yeah. and he was getting like these lucasade tablets and a shot of whiskey before he went on stage and i'm like this is absolutely mental this um like what is that process like doing all these well because lawrence was I, asking me about trend before we came on and i'm yeah. like I, trends I, almost a whole other thing now what is it what yeah. is that even trembolone is a anabolic steroid that um see a lot a lot of anabolic steroids aromatize what that means is um because estrogen, which is a female hormone, and testosterone, which is a male hormone, they're, they're fairly similar, yeah? Mm. So if you're putting testosterone from outside, and so your levels are going right up, male hormone levels, your body can actually convert some of that to estrogen. So the estrogen comes up as well, so it's trying to keep a bit of a balance. Right. But not all steroids do that. Some of them don't aromatize to estrogen, uh, trembolone being 
being one of them. Is that considered a, a positive or a negative? Because uh, it's considered to be a positive before a contest because if your estrogen levels are high, you tend to hold more body fat and more water, it'd be right. a bit softer, right? It's a female hormone. Mm -hmm. um, so Trembolone, we were using that in a form called Parab Parabolone. Um, came in from France in 76 milligrams and I'd probably use two of those a week. Two or three a week was like accepted back then that that would be the maximum, so around 200 milligrams uh, because it's quite powerful and potentially a little bit toxic. Uh, guys are coming to me now that don't even compete in this. I'm on 800 milligrams of trend. I'm like, where did you get this? Where did you get this information from? Like, it's, it's crazy. Mm. But, you know, the internet is a source of information, which information is good, but you've got a lot of information. Well, that's what we and were talking about. Not all we of it's good, about. a lot of it's bad. Yeah, we were talking about this before, weren't we? Because part of, the, part of my research, I ended up on TikTok. Uh, and no one ever wants to say that when they're doing research. But the, but the point with that was that there was a guy on um, TikTok who was basically, he's a bodybuilder and he had his own bodybuilding account. And I, I think he hadn't, you know, he wasn't particularly famous, but he was saying he was kind of beyond his peak and now it was time for him to come clean about a couple of things. And one of them was about Tren, and he said he had a, a gyno problem and these kind of things as a, as a I guess as a, a, a side effect of that, and that it came with a lot of side effects. And he felt that the, there was a lot of people on TikTok, Instagram, all these places, just advocating for the use of this stuff, not really talking responsibly about it. And he said it really concerned him because, I mean- Yeah, I think many uh, each generation of bodybuilders are pushing the chemical envelope a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It certainly looks that way on stage. Yeah, and, and what, you know, what, <coughs> I'm told by people that compete or even don't compete that are just taking it recreationally. They're taking, uh, I'm saying, mate, you're taking more than I took from Mr. Olympia. So I don't think you need that. And uh, recreation, you know, you, you, just is it, you're getting the benefit that you want, the recovery, the muscle building, right? with trying to minimize the negative effects. And there is going to be a certain point where you're not really getting any more positive effects anyway. Mm. It's like a glass of water. Once it's full, it's full. You can't use it, it's just spilling over then. So then you just put more stress on your body for no benefit. Is that placebo almost then for some people? Um, I think so. And then they're, they're holding more water. It's not really muscle. That's why the physiques are looking softer. But now. to someone like me, an everyday person, if someone's holding more water, I'm like, fucking hell, you look good. Like, we don't really know the difference well, out know, on the street. I, I get a lot of people asking me for advice. And I always say to them, like, me personally, my advice to you, unless you're competing, don't take any steroids unless you're like past 40 and your testosterone is low and that's hormone replacement. That's a different story. That's, that's good <laughs> yeah. for your health. If your testosterone is low and you put it back to, you know, optimal yeah. levels, optimal where you would be when you're 25, 30 and you're like 45, 50 years old, it has tremendous health benefits. But at super high levels, it's not. You know? that, that's an interesting angle as well. The testosterone replacement therapy. Yeah. Um, would, like men have this period of their life where things stop working as well as they used to and, and things like uh, people call it a midlife crisis but often it is just like when your hormone levels are out of whack and you've been used to a certain level of pep in your step I guess yeah. um, you're not feeling as good so that, that's where it can really help men it's feel not, like it's themselves not just, it's not that you're just not feeling so good um, depression I guess as well depression mm. arthritis diabetes, heart problems, mm. all these things can be improved by taking, uh, you know, testosterone replacement amount. Mm. So in that context, it's very healthy for people. There's, uh, there's a book that I read, it was in French at first, now it's in English, Ageless Man. And there's a French doctor in there that's been prescribing testosterone and other androgens for, for decades. And it's got all the case mm. studies of all the, you know, uh, health problems that people had that it was basically able to fix with testosterone, but testosterone is no profit in it for drug companies. So they'd rather you take some arthritis drugs and some insulin and some antidepressants and some this and some that. Viagra. You know, all that stuff <laughs> together, yeah. yeah. It's, it's more profitable for you them. See, so you see when guys get older yeah. though, like they, no offense to any of the elderly men out there, but, but you know. You are, a sh I mean, you're speaking to someone who's almost 60. No, but, he, then, but I'm not talking about Dorian. Well, I don't feel like I'm 60. Yeah, exactly, no, that's no, what no. I was about to say. Yeah. You know when you see those guys who are getting older, the man boobs are coming in, yeah. things aren't, 
like and they can't be bothered to get out of bed and do the same thing so as they used to. So lack of motivation, yeah. Yeah, and a bit of, uh, you know, testosterone in them, uh, it would change the game. But it, like you say, it isn't advertised by the companies who can make money off of it because it's... Yeah, you got maybe you'd have to go to a private clinic or something. Yeah. Even your GP is going to probably frown upon it and say, no, 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 you don't need it. Yeah. Even if you're, you know, there's a there's a parameters, right? Your testosterone should be between whatever 200 and 1000. Uh-huh. So if it's 201, I'm okay and you won't prescribe it to me. I got to be 199 and then you'll give it to me. So uh-huh. if you're 200 or 250 or 300, it's not optimal. Uh-huh. You know, you're not functioning optimally. You want to be up near the uh, the top of the range. Uh-huh. Um and there's this bit of a stigma about it because it's a male hormone testosterone yeah. steroids bodybuilders but women are on hormone replacement and they're you know improving their quality of life with that um, it's this idea that it's cheating and it's like well not you're not we're not cheating anyone if we do this later on in life as men it's it well, you're just be having fine. a better quality of life yeah. and a better health yeah what's wrong with that is it cheating taking insulin is it cheating mm. taking thyroid if your thyroid's not working you're not producing enough testosterone so do you still take any? Yeah, like, I take replacement yeah. uh, therapy. If I don't, it'll be too low because, I mean, it happens anyway to, to men as they get older. Uh-huh. But my, I accelerated mine because I was taking steroids for bodybuilding. So right. this suppresses your own levels and it's hard to get them to bounce back after using it for years. Because I'm looking at you at 60 years old thinking, bloody hell, I want what he's doing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, testosterone placement is just part of it. I've got mm. a whole regime for my health. I do... Um, breathing exercises I do meditation I do stretching I do cardio exercise I go in the sun I walk barefoot on the floor like so many things I do to look after myself because I did this sport which is what I wanted to do and I don't have any regrets or anything like that but it was hard on my body so now I'm being kind Kind. to my body you know It's, it's a very extreme lifestyle and now I feel like I'm more balanced. I'm balancing everything rather than being in this extreme mode. 